Welcome back to Hasbro's Hide. Continuing on with our 6.5 Grendel series, we're going to shoot more affordable ammunition today. Um, with the times being what they are, the insanity in Washington and assault on Second Amendment rights of legal law-abiding citizens, uh, I just don't want to go out and shoot really expensive, hard-to-get components uh, because you just don't know, at least in the short term, if we'll get them back again. And so with that sort of uh, overtone, which unfortunately is reality, we're going to shoot some more commonly available or lower cost components today. In the end, I'm really just trying to fire form this new Starline Brass. But I would like to learn a little bit while I do this because I'm going to have to spend some money here to fire form that brass. So we're going to shoot in them Hornady Bulk 123 grain hollow point boat tail bullets. I got these from Mid-South and they're actually pretty reasonably priced. Um, and so you might watch for those, they're a pretty good deal. They do the same kind of thing on 308 bullets and have a really good pricing on bulk. It's all like 250 and I think 500 uh, at a time. And so that's what we'll shoot for here. Haven't shot these at all, so we'll see how they do. If they're just a bulk bullet or if they're actually pretty good, we don't know, we'll find out. To test that though, we're gonna go back to a load that we shot with CR Match Kings, and that's AR Comp. Now the CR Match Kings didn't shoot that great with this combination. <laughs> that's sort of why, one reason is I don't mind burning that powder a little bit. We've had some other rounds that have been decent with it. Um, but we're gonna just go through, and at least we'll have a head-to-head -head comparison there between that powder and this bullet with the same charge weights. And so those charge weights we're gonna shoot are gonna be from 27.2 grains of AR comp up to 28.4. And so that's exactly what we shot before with the uh, CR Match King. So we'll see how we do. On the other side though is Ramshot TAC. Now, I was able to pick this up at a local gun store and they are really, this particular store is really good about trying to keep some things available for their local customers. And this was still on the shelf, which is awesome. I haven't shot it until recently. I shot a few rounds in 308, um, but I've never shot this powder before. I understand it can be a bit temperature sensitive. We'll see. Uh, we're gonna be shooting probably in around 45 degrees Fahrenheit. Something like that will be the temperature by the time we get out there. And uh, so we'll see, but we'll shoot it. Same primers, we're gonna use Wolf uh, Magnum small rifle primers here and our same new Starline cases. But in this case, we're gonna take some numbers out of the Hornady book and we're gonna go from 26.6 on the low end up to 27.8 on the high end. And we'll see how we do. So that takes us up to the published maximum. So we'll see how we do. This is new case, uh, new cases, and so you know we'll have to watch pressure because the case volume will be a little bit smaller. Um, but we'll see. So anyway, I thought you might like to see this. One other thing we're also going to do though is I had done a short video on the battery eliminator for our small digital scales. Well, I have two of these Maxis Dantes now. This one's brand new and this is the one I have been using. So we're gonna run them actually side by side using these battery eliminators. And in just a few checks back and forth, they've been surprisingly um, good on staying in, in comparison to each other, staying and reading the same values and not drifting too much. So uh, we're gonna test those out tonight and see how they do. So uh, anyway, let's get set up and we'll size this brass and then we'll start our loading. All right, just working our way through resizing of the brass. Now, you can see here, this is a good example. One that has a, you know, a dent at the case mouth. Not a big deal. Run it through a resizer, size all the way down. The case body really isn't getting resized at all in this case. I checked that and then that is gone. Now, what I've done is because I don't want to have to, um, you know, just spray every one of these and clean them all, is I've used a little bit of Hornady one shot on just a few of these. And you'll find that that'll put enough up in that die that you'll be fine then for the rest of them being dry and you'll size just fine. And so uh, I'll do that. I want to just do a once fired brass, uh, I mean, a uh, new brass like that, because you can go, you know, one that's been lubed in the Hornady is supposed to be good for powder, etc. And then I can get probably another uh, seven or eight without it and kind of keep the brass clean that way. Uh, now I'll wipe this off, you know, on the outside and things, but it's just one less thing to deal with uh, when you're doing that. So we'll grab another one here that's been coated and um, because I'm running down near the end, I'll have a few extra. So um, anyway, just like so might see that, it's just a one way I do it, I don't know if it's good or bad, but it doesn't seem to be scuffing the brass or causing any drag marks when I do it that way. You'll feel 
when they start to tighten up, especially when you pull them back down on the downstroke as the sizer comes back up through, you'll feel that. Because the, like I say, the outside of the case really isn't hitting the body at all. It's really just getting sized on the inside and the top uh, neck and shoulder area. Uh, just a little bit maybe. So anyway, we'll finish these up and then we'll get on to priming and powder. All right, moving on to priming of our cases now. I'm using the RCBS priming system, hand priming system, and then of course those uh, Wolf Magnum small rifle primers. So uh, primer pockets so far feel really good. Um, definitely not loose, good and snug, but not excessive. And so that's, uh, uh, you would hope that's the case always, but at least in our new brass, things are looking good. So I'll uh, finish these up and then we'll move on to loading our powder and bullets. All right, continuing on now with the loading of our cases. We've already done a first charge of 27.2 and so now we're starting 27.5 grains of AR comp. I'll just show a few of these because this is um, really, you know, a repetitive thing. I won't bother showing tack. It's the same process. But uh, that says 27.5 and this says 27.5. 0.5 when it settles in. So let's see what our second maxis Dante says 27.48 within two hundredths of grain, close enough. So um, we'll continue that process along the way, finish up all of our cases, um, and then uh, we'll be ready to seat our bullets. I'll just do a couple more of these 27.52. There's a 27.54, so let's settle that. 27.54, then two hundredths. So that'll be good. Twenty-seven point five on our charge master light. It's pretty accurate. Now, this is a stick powder, so not perfect. But pretty good. 27.48 and 27.48. So just continue this process and checking of these. Uh, it's always good to double check your RCBS. And if you use an electronic scale, back them up. Uh, portable scales, back them up. And then you can get some pretty accurate readings. And you know the the numbers I've been able to achieve on uh, standard deviations, extreme spreads, things like that have been really proving out at least that by doing it this way it seems to work. There are better ways, better scales, but this is what I have and it's fairly uh, inexpensive. So anyway, uh, let's finish these up and then we'll start seating our bullets. All right, welcome in from the range. I thought we'd take a quick look at our brass. Now, of course, this is a new Starline brass, and this is the um, AR comp side, and over here is the tack. So we'll start with the tack. The tack from 26.6 all the way up to 27.8 looks perfectly fine. And that's per Hornady's manual. That was all good and, and really no issues uh, at all with the, with the brass. 
AR Comp is a big difference though. Now these are known good loads. I'd run this test before in Hornady, but the Hornady was oh, at least three times fired by that way. So we had a larger case capacity, I'm sure, than this brand new Starline. And outside it was at least 30 degrees warmer than it was when we shot this round. Uh, so while the uh, previous firing of this in the Hornady brass and a warmer temperature didn't show any signs of pressure. Boy, this sure did. The first row had a few, a few signs of ejector swipes, uh, excuse me, extractor swipes, but I didn't really feel a burr until I got them back and checked them a little bit. I sort of looked at them, thought, hey, primers don't look too bad. Uh, a little shininess, let's shoot the next one. Well, I shoot the next one. So this first one was 27.2. This is 27.5. These are not really high loads, and these have some major burrs raised up. So uh, it was time to stop there. Like an idiot, I have this great lab radar uh, chronograph to use and left it at home. Well, it was, it was quite a quite a drive to the range, so I just thought, well, we're going to go ahead and do our load development because I really am just trying to process this brass once through, uh, once fired, and then we'll do some more serious load development with it. But in any case, I'd like to get some data off of it, and the only thing I could go by is pressure signs and accuracy downrange. Uh, so yeah, we're definitely having high pressure signs. So anyway, uh, let me reposition this camera. We'll take a look at the microscope and let you see exactly what we're talking about. All right, here you can see one of the cases of our first charge of AR Comp 27.2. And you can notice here that right in this area, right here, is the burr. This burr has been raised up. Right here is where the uh, extractor grabbed it on both sides, and then as it pulled it out then, it raised this burr up, drug this brass along here and raised that up. And this was the lighter one, okay? So this one, it, you could see a little shiny spot right here. But that's about all I noticed uh, until later I had my finger over it and you can definitely feel a small burr. Well, let's take a look at the one next to it. Now this row is 27.5, so just 0.3 grains higher. And uh, we'll focus here a little bit. There, can you see that? Look how raised up this section is right here. Right there, there's a big burr right there. I'll get a side view angle here in just a second to show you a little bit more of that. This one you can drag your finger across. You could probably even cut yourself on. It's a big burr and uh, the imprint there of the extractor. So um, not a good thing, definitely not a good thing. So at that point I stopped, right? It was definitely time to, to not do this anymore. Um, so we'll unload those other rounds and load them lower and get them processed through and then maybe creep back up on this again once we get once fired and increase that case capacity and maybe on a warmer day. Because I had no issues with these before, but these, yeah, this is bad pressure signs. Uh, if you look, the primer though, it's still not so bad, right? The edges here are still rounded, um, no cratering, uh, fairly deep impression, but really, you know, really no major cratering here. Um, and the edges are still there. So that's not always a perfect indicator of pressure. I mean, um, you know, these are Wolf Magnums, so they're probably a little heavier primer cup, things like that. But nonetheless, there's some small signs of pressure here where it's imprinted in the bolt face machining into it, but I don't think that's that abnormal. Um, but anyway, so it's not, not the only sign of pressure. So let's take a look at this case a little bit closer from the side. All right, uh, here's the case closes up. Now this is the second charge weight, 27.5. And again, these are known loads, right? This And this is second from the lowest of the pressures. But this is why you always check your brass when you're reloading, especially on, on loads you haven't loaded, uh, you know, in the same kind of component. So the new star line versus Hornady 3X, uh, 47 day, degree day versus about an 80 degree day. Or so yeah it's a lot of difference and the pressure's definitely climbed up and so I was trying to watch carefully and well I probably went honestly a step too far I would not advise doing this to anybody I went ahead and fired these five and I should have stopped right there uh, accuracy was terrible and for good reason a lot of things going on inside of our chamber and our cartridge so there's the burr right there's a small one here but that's really the back side of the lettering it's got rubbed by that uh, extractor coming by, but a big, big burr there. Now, if you notice, also bent the rim, so it comes up a little bit here and back down. Now, I think the case is uh, salvageable. Um, we'll have to keep an eye on it uh, for sure, but I think I can remove the burrs and then the case head will flatten and I should be able to 
save that piece of brass but um, I'll keep an eye on it because this much stress is not a good thing to do it'll definitely shorten the life of the brass so I stopped right stopped maybe should have stopped the uh, first time this happened but I fired four more and then stopped so we got uh, 15 rounds to unload and to load down and lower weights lower powder charges and fire again because really like I said all I'm trying to do is get these uh, this case is once fired, not abused, and this is abuse to your breath, to be honest. Not intentional, but that's what it is. Um, so anyway, let's take a look at uh, what these what this uh, load's produced and as far as the targets go. All right, here's our target. Now again, this is the 123 grain Hornady bulk bolts from Mid South, and I didn't expect great accuracy, I, I, but I did kind of expect maybe something a little better than what I got. Um, but there was a lot going on here. So this is the AR comp, and this is where we stopped. So I had these five here, which, you know, not great. I didn't even really bother measuring that group because uh, <laughs> it wasn't that great. And so we, I moved on to, into this one, this group here, and there's two here, one here, one here, and one there. Uh, and that was, you know, one and a half MOA. Nothing great, but that's also right where I was seeing all the big brass issues and so, um, you know, burrs and all that, that I just showed you. And so that's... A uh, good reason to stop right there. Now, um, they move over then down to the TAC, and TAC was shooting arguably much better. Now, this is the first round right after that, okay? Some of this, you know, this scatter here, I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't blame all on AR comp there, but um, I just cleaned the rifle. So there was, I stripped it all the way down, copper removal, powder, everything. So it was you know, completely bare and first shots through the gun then. You know, could that be part of that? Maybe. I don't know, because this was arguably a little bit tighter than I had one fly. And could it have gotten better? Yeah, but with the pressure signs, I'm done. Well, TAC, then, this is the first rounds of TAC right after that. You know, and sometimes it takes a barrel a little while to season or settle in with a new powder. Um, but it was the same bullet. And uh, you see then a four here and one here. So it was trying to group really tight. Uh, in fact, most of these were trying to group really tight and then one out. And I can show you a couple where I guarantee were me. But this is a uh, 0.94 MOA group. And again, I'll show these stats right after this if you want to see those. Um, so the next one, though, opened up. It wasn't bad here. There's two here, one here, one here, and then one up there. And that one up there made it a 1.47 MOA. Next one over, a little bit bigger. Again, four grouping pretty good and one out of here. The thing is, with this one and with this next one, I can tell you 100% was me. It's like I knew I did it. I knew I jerked the trigger. And sure enough, right there it was it. So I, a lot of these I love to blame on me, and I'm not sure, but these two I know for a fact. And In fact, uh, I cut the audio out of the commentary, but I commented on myself doing that uh, so anyway four here wouldn't be too bad this is probably you've got a little less than uh, three quarters of an inch or so um, but then that one threw up there and that made it a 1.78 MOA uh, group so not good but that's again a jerk on the trigger problem well this one have two here one here one here and one here that one I know I pulled okay but so the group size maybe is not so influenced by the one I pulled okay because I have two right here low um, and that one was was uh, see 0.993 MOA so not terrible but just not good but I can tell from this that maybe this bullet even though it's bulk uh, has some potential is tack the best powder for it yeah I don't know I don't know it's gonna maybe maybe we can explore it a little bit more since I have so much of it but I think we'll find maybe some better powders for it but we'll check uh, and see what happens so this last one then here uh, this one pulled up in a way I it, it could be me but I can't say it was me I didn't uh, feel like I did but who knows and that's a that's our largest group then 1.86 uh, MOA so um, you know some interesting results some uh, very very <laughs> scary or cautious results up here for sure um, but I think there is some potential. When you see groups like this and one down, uh, you know, I got to shoot that again. I really got to shoot that again because the next group here, similar, right? Four here, one here. So I've got to shoot that and see if it's see if it's me pulling down um, in, my, in my shooting a technique. Now, right after this, I shot some amazing targets on some other uh, guns and calibers. So I, I, I don't know. But um, anyway, I think there's enough here that says, hey, TAC isn't too bad. Right, um, and certainly if you're you're looking for one MOA gun or less, um, these bulk bullets and TAC make for a uh, cheap combination to shoot, considering the component insanity and pricing right now. 
uh, relatively relatively cheap because it's about the cheapest bullet I could find for 6.5 rental. Um, and then that was the cheapest powder I could find in eight pound jugs. So uh, interesting, my first time using TAC, uh, other than like say some 308 testing. Um, so not too bad. It seemed to be pretty pressure tolerant. Uh, we'll see how temperature tolerant it is when we shoot it a little bit later this year because uh, I've, I've read a lot. Some people say it's very temperature sensitive. So we'll see. But anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed this. I'll show you these stats right after this and then we'll catch you next time.